This was Mogadishu before the civil war, an enchanting city that gained popularity because of its beauty and was given the name the White Pearl of the Indian Ocean. Somalia was a country with immense potential and promise. It enjoyed a period of relative stability and development. During this time, Somalia witnessed significant infrastructure development, economic growth and improvements in education and healthcare. The capital Mogadishu became a vibrant cultural hub, attracting tourists and international investments. Unfortunately, this memory has faded for many people because of the civil war period that followed in the late 1980s and early 1990s that plunged Somalia into a state of turmoil and devastation. But today, Somalia is on a path of development and renewal. Over the past decade, the country has made significant strides toward peace and stability. The Somali people have shown remarkable resilience and determination in rebuilding their nation. The Somali Peninsula, nestled in the Horn of Africa, boosts a strategic geographical location. Its borders touch several influential nations, shaping the region's dynamics. To the west lies Ethiopia, a landlocked country that shares a long border with Somalia. Ethiopia and Somalia have deep historical and cultural ties, fostering trade and cooperation. Moving northwest, we encounter Djibouti. This small coastal nation serves a vital trade getaway for Somalia facilitating economic exchange and cross-border interactions, Djibouti's significance to Somalia cannot be understated. Now let's journey south to Kenya. Kenya, home to a vibrant Somali community, has been a destination for Somali migrants. Nairobi, Kenya's capital and other cities are enriched by the contributions of the Somali diaspora. Trade, finance and education all adapt to the enterprising Somali community. Speaking of integration, the East African Community Block takes center stage, comprising Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda, Rwanda, Burundi, DRC and South Sudan. The ESC fosters regional cooperation, development and integration. Since its re-establishment in 2000, the ESC has made remarkable progress, establishing a customs union and a common market. But it doesn't stop there. The ESC envisions a future with a monetary union and political federation. And now Somalia emerges onto the scene, eager to tap into the benefits of regional integration. The journey of Federal Republic of Somalia to join the East African community began way in 2012 when uh, the government of Somalia did a formal application to join the East African community. And this was after they considered quite a number of things that they felt they qualified. Because first and foremost, for you to qualify to be a member of the African community, you must have uh, geographical proximity or border with one of the existing members of the East African community. And therefore, uh, Somalia borders uh, Kenya, who is a member of the East African community. So from that perspective, 
uh, Somalia then uh, qualifies to become a member. Secondly, when Somalia did an application, they committed to adherence with the principles of the treaty, which we believe in in East Africa, and one is rule of law, democracy, and good governance. Last year, when uh, President uh, of the Federal Republic of Somalia they, you know, came to the summit of the ESC as a special guest, he gave a powerful message justifying why Somalia actually she is part and person of the East African family. And in that, the heads of state were there. And a decision was made, and the decision directed the council and the secretariat for a strong the process of admitting the Somalia into the EAC. And therefore, that uh, immediately after that, uh, the I visited Mungadishu, I visited the president, want to deliver the official message of the heads of states on their decision to commence uh, the Somalia admission. And uh, when I met the president and the entire government, I could feel their passion their willingness, their commitment to join this community. And in fact, they felt it has really delayed. Negotiations between the Federal Republic of Somalia and the East African community on Somalia's potential membership started on August 22nd in Nairobi, Kenya. The negotiation lasted for nine days where both parties focused on discussing the accreditation and integration process required for Somalia's admission. Since the negotiation period, we witnessed a significant public uproar. The community expresses deep-seated fears stemming from recent ocean disputes with Kenya, which resulted in a case at the International Court of Justice. Concerns are widespread that joining the EAC might reignite these conflicts, jeopardizing Somali territorial sovereignty. Furthermore, there is a prevailing sentiment that Integration into the bloc may lead to the erosion of the Somali language and cultural heritage. Yeah, I know many other many people are, are, are saying that Somalia, why, why now? Why join now? The question is, when is a good time to join? Uh, first, joining the East African market is not overnight business. Somalia has applied 2012, then it has applied 2015, and it has applied again 2022. To join that market, even when you are accepted, it takes time to renegotiate and to prepare. Kenya is now number one. They, they fulfill that demand, 66%. Other countries fulfill less than that. So Somalia will start now from bottom up, so it will take time for us to be there. So it will take at least a minimum 10 years to fully become a member of, of that market. So do we wait another 10 years and then apply? No. I think this is the right time, this is the right moment. You should be aware that Somalia for the last 21, 22 years has been economically unstable. That clearly means also economically, being political unstable economically, Somalia has not been doing very well, well. It is, will start from a disadvantaged point. Because when you look at the economy of Somalia, it's not only fragile, it's unstable. It means these other countries unless Somalia checks clearly very well, they might be able to be on an advantageous point in terms of the capacity to produce and supply and the capacity to trade with Somalia without Somalia having enough to trade with these other member states. Interesting thing about that particular issue is we can adapt easily uh, to the new things because we are in the process of rebuilding our country and the process of creating more opportunity for our people and in the process of a, a head start on technology and telecommunication and all that. So it's a lot easier to adapt to the EAC 
the EAC protocols and the EAC rules and regulations for us than many other many other countries that are already established and have their own way of doing, of doing things. You know, in these days, sovereignty is a relative, uh, you know, concept. Uh, it's relative to something. Sovereignty in what? People's movement, goods. Uh, uh, that sovereignty now uh, is a shared space. Uh, and there are uh, processes that are ongoing right now. And globalization is making uh, borders that we know of uh, as non existent. Because if you look at the cultural interactions of people, political interactions, and also economic interactions, you can really feel and you can see that having a border or sovereignty in that sense is a shared space. What does that mean for Somalia and Somalis? It means that Somalis are a training society. We are already across the world. We have the largest diaspora in the world. No other country has such a large diaspora community. We function globally. The elements that East Africa community will give us is a bigger space to function and to flourish economically. Somalia is not worried about our sovereignty. You see, whenever disputes arise within or amongst members of East African community, we have a framework on how to resolve those disputes. And that's why it's an advantage. If, for example, the dispute is there between Somalia and Kenya on an aspect, or between Somalia and Tanzania, or Somalia and Uganda, or any other country, then we are going to use the internal mechanisms to resolve this within the framework of the treaty establishing the East African community. When, for example, there, was a, there were issues in Eastern DRC, EAC was able to come up, appointed a facilitator who was able to resolve. But therefore, we were able to resolve, we are, able, we are, we are making progress to resolve the problems in Eastern DRC internally. And therefore, whenever there is a, if there's a dispute that has existed between Somalia and any other country, we'll be able to use the mechanisms within the EAC to resolve that internally. And that would be more helpful and beneficial for the people of Somalia, but also for the people of East Africa. Where we are now with the East Africa community and where they are now, they have been able to successfully negotiate and agree uh, on customs union. Um, they were able to negotiate and agree on common market. Um, and then they have initiated the process of the monetary union, but they, have, um, they haven't gone that far. Um, and the political federation is actually has not been even initiated what it would look like. But for each pillar, as I said, um, to be operationalized, there has to be protocols. And for those protocols to be set, um, there has to be fundamental principles. And uh, what we need to understand are in, in any negotiation to, for you to know what are the fundamental principles and what are the operational principles. And that's what the treaty talks about in Article 6 and Article 7, which are really, really very important. Well, in a common one, one obvious consequence is security. But through the whole region, one of the big reasons of joining in the community is that the analysis of so-called uh, 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 terrorists these days, no one country can defeat it. So being joining the East African community has to give us an opportunity and an upper hand to fight uh, uh, Al-Shabaab and similar uh, organizations. So they, they are concerned with that, but they also know that if, if, we, if they don't help us uh, fight uh, Al-Shabaab and others like them, uh, the Khawarij, 
they, they would end up uh, taking over the whole the whole region. The other thing is, you see, I think uh, members of the East African community, some of the members from what I've gathered, are still in doubt whether Somalia should be accepted into the community or not. But I believe you are aware of countries like Kenya, we have uh, invited and uh, appreciated the, the initiative of Somalia joining the community. But the danger here will be the insecurity in Somalia, which is there currently, will spill up out to other member states, if not properly, properly checked. Because you see, one of the concepts of the common market is to open borders for free movement of persons and goods and services. So this is one of the security concerns which I think most of the member states are raising. And Somalia must address thing, this thing once for all. Some of the security challenges that we have are real. Al-Shabaab is real. Terrorism is real. But uh, I want to also reassure people that we have made huge progress in terms of really defeating the enemy of Al-Shabaab. We are pushing them out from uh, every corner of Somalia. Uh, in the last uh, uh, 10 months, uh, Al-Shabaab remains in few areas in Somalia. We will be finishing them off in Kalmudu very soon. We will be moving to the south and few places in the south. Uh, we are confident that we will kick them out. Uh, in the new year of 2024, we would like to celebrate the end of Al-Shabaab. We are confident that Al-Shabaab will be gone in the face of this earth. It's a journey. It's a, it's a process. Somalia may not be yet there, but the question is, is there political commitment to get there? And from where I sit, yes, there's a political commitment to get there. So it's an issue of joining the rest of the brothers and all together work towards that. In the midst of reservations and heartfelt concerns voiced by the Somali community, it becomes crucial to pause and reflect upon the myriad possibilities that may unfold through Somalia's prospective membership in the esteemed East African community. What is the full spectrum of opportunities that integration into this influential bloc may bestow upon Somalia and its people? Uh, by becoming a member, Somalia will gain access to a larger regional market, fostering trade and investment opportunities. Uh, this increased market integration will also attract foreign investors and create jobs, contributing to Somalia's economic growth and uh, development. Additionally, the EAC offers a platform for collaboration on infrastructure projects such as transportation, networks, and energy systems, which can enhance connectivity and improve the country's overall infrastructure. So Somalia being in that market, and Somalia being a gateway, we are, we are, we are luckily located one of the best areas in the world. I mean, we are the prime time uh, real estate of the region. So Somalia will be a gateway from if you are in India or in China or in the Middle East and you want to go to East Africa market. Somalia is a logical place to start, whether you are talking about airline hub, whether they are talk, you are talking lo a, a logistical uh, 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 shipment uh, uh, process, whether you are talking a small manufacturing process that, that are intended to market to the rest of East Africa market. I think Somalia will be a better place and Somalia will have a better chance uh, to benefit from that uh, investment. Also, Somali people are, are, are young generation, almost 70% of Somalis are less than 30 years old. So we have a huge human resource. And they are aware of the opportunity because they bring their families here for health, they bring their families here for, for a visit or for schooling for their children. And they come and shop and go back, mm -hmm. and there is, uh, as you probably know, no less than three, four fights a day between Mogadishu and uh, between Nairobi, Mogadishu and Argesa and Galkayo and, and other parts of, of Somalia. And that's all business. That's all business. Mari joins uh, the East African member states. The territorial size will increase. 
the population size within that catchment will also increase. That will mean a bigger market size for Port Somalia and the member states of the East African community. That goes without saying, therefore, with the removal of all trade barriers, because Somalia will have become a member of uh, the East African community, there will be barriers removed in a progressive manner. That will mean, therefore, there will be easy flow of goods and services into Somalia and outside Somalia to the other member states of the East African community. That, therefore, will mean it will increase the volume of trade and automatically the volume of trade being increased will mean increased transactions, therefore increased revenue generation. One year we, as a lot to offer, one is the, and I said in my opening remarks, we, we, uh, we, Somalia is going to offer, you know, you know, the people of Somalia, their DNA is business, is entrepreneur. So if you can learn, I know, and Somali people can see a dry land and out of it make an opportunity. So how can we, this culture, this demeanor of entrepreneurship, be you know be uh, be be exported to the rest of east africans and learn from them but also strong values in terms of cultural values which i think is also very important because our culture as africans is important and in somali people are very strong in preserving uh, african culture for that matter and i think that is what will make us uh, you know you know, learn still from Somalia on how to strengthen uh, this. But also most importantly is, and I think this is what East Africa can learn, is how, you know, with the, with the, and I've talked about the 3,300 stretch. Look at how East Africans, if we work together now, jointly, how we can exploit that, that cost online for the good of the people of East Africa. And Somali may not be able to exploit fully on their own. And therefore, the rest of East Africans can come and benefit from this, but for the good of the people of Somalia and the people of East Africa. You see, one of the sectors that is also likely to benefit is the maritime sector. Because you see, Somalia, along its coastline, is going to be an opener to the Arabian Peninsula. So I think we see a case where the maritime industry and sector is going to to grow. So I call the kid that Magala Mugdisha who is the Rasha or Mahali or Jaina, a lawyer, and what do you soon can lawyer and a Hakamita Bella or Alamason or Mahali strategic or Alamason or let's go for East or Log, but Meshalas or Gilly Africa. Rasha is good to Amam initiative class. A good to the kid the Magala Mugdisha, Mela Target, good to Tamar of Sodno seed and electric in an. Hello, Madam and Kunalno, Halera de Albabka, and Asia, Africa and Kunalno. We have first no sedenta in Asia in Sogalan or Bada Adohu, Halera de Halkan, you madam. Well, Marco Lofi, Shamasha, Dung, Halas or Sara, a barriga. We have no good doing, and Basso, a good doing, Arusha, a good doing, Halera de Ishe, Marco and Rodonta in Mesha, and Hadi La Balario, Logo Talaga, Roshas, Somalia, Hujian, we have no Rokarta Mel, Bada Ada Luka, Luxido, Mel Strategia. The youthful population in Somalia, as well as the rest of the East African community partner states, holds immense potential for the future. Their energy, creativity and enthusiasm are catalysts for economic growth, social development and political stability. How can the inclusion of Somalia within the ESC bloc unlock numerous opportunities for these young individuals and what does this move mean for millions of Somali youth? Wadamadaas wa wadam mahooga naga hormarsan naga dad badan naga dawladnimada wada xooga ay soo jirtay hadan dadan wax la qaybsanay inana dee waa muhiim inaan wax la qaybsano dee dadka waana barnaamij fiican inaan ganacsigeena aan halkaas geeyno oo maaragtay isu socodka gaadiidka ay dadka ay wax dhan ay u noo furmo oo wadooyin la dhiso oo hadan shidaal anagu aan la soo baxno aan maaragtay aan ku suuq geysano wax soo saar dalagaana hadan u la soo baxno kaluunka 
إن أنا مارك تانو سوق جينو وأروح مهم أويان وأنا وأنا طرف يعن ويان لكن سوى حلوق بهاي هاي تولد فترة على الصومالية إن أي حد أي لق ويارته أي لق ويارته وده وحال القبانة يو ست ده أنا وده أحد ما أهن ده شيء شيان مارك تانو حلم عاملينا وحيابها يرير كأحد أحد أنا أجنة أنا ولس أجنة هاي وإن أنا جوجينا ده كمر كأنا دقمين سوى ناكسان ولا دقنا مارك كل الصومالي وقرن ويا أو بلارن أو معترف آه وحين كجرت جامعة عرضوا كجرتها شدة وكل أفريقيا ما كجرتها مركز دوت دمن دريس كأي نقص وبيرو إعتلال الله يا إيشو نك أمنية نك دقالها نك سعودالك إن نقص وبيرو عاد من سود وين هي إن نقص وبيرته إيش أفريقيا ووحلو فرح واي وايو دتكي وحفعنانا يا سعود كيا فعنا فعنانا يا حدودي أمان كذا فعنانا يا شعب كيا يا تلوين يو جنعسي وذاك يا أمني وذاك يا مركز ده لما لها إني والله ووحد أمهم سن وياي هذه هذا نوفى عشان هاي وأنا سود وين هيا سوماليا إني كبرتو ودم هذا مدوي أو جنعسي جا آه إني كبرتو هذا نطاجر سن هاي وحوا ودم برواقا هاي وهستان هاي ودم وحوايا هسه وحويل باسنا هاي وحن ربنا إن عم كبرنا لين تاني ميلات عن إني شقهلان وحبس حصابر تي لا يسكو حرمة دولة هذا دونك إن عم كحر كسيح حرمة ربنا إن شاء الله وتعالى وحول بقى الدنيا كدعاء إن وضن كيان أي كوك أهات ربنا إن شاء الله وأنا رجعنا هنا. You know if East Africa can come together, we can make a difference. You know I've seen the last couple of weeks like in South Africa making a what they call in the news the break is the new money that you know that shows you Africa is going way far than people thinking. You know Africa. We need to wake up and become a united. And if Somalia become a part of a East African, why not? I welcome the move of Somali joining the East African community. This is because I see them as good investors. Actually, in Nairobi, if you look at most businesses right now, they are being operated and run by Somali. If you look at the business sector here, most businesses in Nairobi are currently being run and operated by Somali, which is improving actually our economy. Uh, not only when we come to business, but also when you go into construction right now. There are so many buildings that are coming up and they are the developers, you see. So uh, they are improving our economy. You find our landscape also growing. More buildings are coming up. There's a new mall actually in Italy. Uh, it's the biggest mall compared to floor space right now. Uh, it's owned by Somali. So I'll welcome the move uh, because I know it will bring more jobs, opportunities, and better things ahead. Okay, my name is Salim Dikumana. I'm from Burundi. I'm Burundian. I've got experience here uh, seven years in Wakana, Somalia. So, vile na wajua ni watu wana penda maendeleo kwanza. So ni watu ni watafutaji, ni wapambanaji. Alafu pia vile vile ni watu wa wapendi hawana ile ubaguzi tunaita kwa Kiswahili yao kama we ni uko na talent fulani ama kama wewe unaweza kufanya kitu yoyote wanaweza kukusupport hawaangalii we ni mkristu ama we ni muislamu ama we nani bora tu unafanya kitu mzuri wanaweza kukusupport Somalia waji wajiunge tu tufanye kazi kwa zini wachapa kazi the concern of the first group called um, we will be overtaken. What we are talking about most is about employment opportunities. Uh, we know that Somalia now, most of this population are youth. So I would say to Somali youth, both women and, and, and men, that they need to be ready for this uh, you know, upcoming integration to the, to the East African community through amplifying and uplifting their uh, education and also learning skills. This is what uh, very important. Somehow in our society, skills are looked down upon and, and that pushes money, money used to stay at homes with, with, no, uh, with no jobs or not being active in the labor market. So I would say to widen their horizon and think about the skills that could be needed 
uh, throughout the country, not just Somalia this time. I just want to uh, add that the, uh, the Somali people, particularly and friends of Somalia, uh, should not just judge and see so Somalia of the past. Somalia of the past is the past. Somalia of the future is what we, what we look at. The future for, for that I look at is, uh, is Somalia trading in the region. That's the future. That's the vision of this thing. It's not something that can happen tomorrow, most of it, but that's what the Somali people have to think about and get ready for it and prepare. I think uh, it's, a, it's a bit exciting to see Somalia take a bold initiative to join the East African community. I know there will be a lot of uh, uh, pressure groups in Somalia who might be against the Somali government joining and integrating itself within the East African community. The sure way to accelerate growth and development in Somalia and enhance political and economic stability in Somalia is integrating within the member states within the region. And I think it's a good gesture. And I believe Somalia will be admitted as soon as possible. These are countries that have gone through tests of the, over time. Um, the East African um, partner states have gone through decades of uh, you know, um, stagnation, decades where even the community fall apart, fell apart and then they reunite. They, 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 had, they, leave, they have a living experience of what it means to really integrate and work together as sovereign partner states. My, my message to uh, the Somali people is that uh, you have nothing to lose other than poverty. You have nothing to lose other than uh, terrorism and insecurity. You have nothing else to lose other than just to meet new faces, new people, and really also having greater opportunity for economic progress and security. We should never be scared to reach out to our neighbors, to our brothers and sisters in Africa, to join them in the struggle for economic development and security. Peace and security in our region. I, my message is a united Africa is good for all of us. United East Africa is good for the people of East Africa. And therefore I want to urge the citizens of East Africa to embrace Somalia joining the East African community. And vice versa that I want to encourage the people of Somalia to join this big family so that we remain one team. Together. together we shall solve so many problems, but divided we shall remain weak. And therefore I think it's important that we take this as a challenge and assure you, the Somali people, you are in very safe hands if you join the East African community.
دادی و دقی و دوریو لادای کوه 